So about three months ago, this video dropped on YouTube in which LA Rams football player Nikel Roby Coleman had a question for Neil deGrasse Tyson. Hey, what's up, Neil? I got like a super important question uh, for you that I've been wondering like my whole life. Okay, is the world round or flat? Now, this was obviously not a spontaneous thing. It was clearly an intentional video. Neil deGrasse Tyson's response led with this. Here's the thing. We thought Earth was flat before we had seagoing vessels that went beyond the horizon, recognizing that there has to be a curve there. Let me help you out, Neil. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, bitch. Sorry, I'll just call you NDT. Let me help you out. One of the things they teach you in the American military, along with hygiene and etiquette and how to fold your laundry, is this. The essence of strategy is to attack weakness. Your go-to idea when defending the globe earth model is to evoke that thing we all were taught in preschool, kindergarten, and first grade about ships being seen going over the horizon. Now, that's not a great strategy, NDT. It's not a great strategy because you're not attacking weakness. You're attacking your opponent's greatest strength in this discussion. The first thing the modern Flat Earth movement did was demonstrate that this childhood fact we were all exposed to about ships going over the horizon wasn't the case. This was done with modern long-distance photography, infrared photography, and field investigations. Investigations that did not require millions of dollars to conduct. Three years ago, Rob Skiba made a video documenting his experiment on Lake Michigan where he demonstrated how photographer Joshua Nowicki was able to capture the Chicago skyline from the other side of Lake Michigan, some 57 miles away, at Grand Muir State Park. Skiba demonstrated that the moisture in the air can act like a convex lens, magnifying the perceived size of an object as it gets further away from us while also via refraction, causing the image to move downward. We've all seen what happens to spoons and other objects in a glass of water, for example. He compared the relative size of Willis Tower to his car, parked 0.6 miles from the building, to the apparent size of Willis Tower to a boat 46 miles away, and also inserted his car next to the boat as uh, an appropriate scale test. This is real life. This is our reality. It's observable, testable, and repeatable. It's also inexpensive. Armed with this knowledge, Skiba constructed a crude but effective model demonstrating how ships can appear to go over the alleged curve or horizon, and also demonstrated how the sun can also appear to set on a flat plane thanks to atmospheric lensing alone. Then there's this footage, taken ten years ago by, I'm told, a U.S. soldier in Afghanistan. In such an arid environment as the desert, where atmospheric lensing is minimal, you can clearly see what is actually happening at dusk. The sun gradually gets smaller until the finite scope of its light leaves us. You may also notice that it hooks slightly as it moves farther away. Now, the heliocentric model has no explanation for this. According to their model, this would mean that the Earth is warping out of our solar system, to borrow a term from Star Trek. Either we are or the Earth isn't moving and the Sun is much closer and smaller than the heliocentric model and its proponents tell us. 
Incidentally, people from this part of the world don't buy the heliocentric model much, since what they see is observable, testable, and repeatable. So, let me help you out, Neil. And this goes out to all the other mouthpieces of the scientific and scientism community who support the heliocentric model, like Michio Kaku and Bill Nye. Rather than try to convince people who have demonstrated that ships going over the horizon does not happen, happens, remove that from your repertoire of globe facts. You need to be more strategic if you're going to quash this intellectual rebellion we have. Now, if you actually have something to say about ships going over the horizon that the Flat Earth community has missed, or you've found some flaw in this, their scientific experiments and reasoning, then please, go ahead and say it. But the more you ignore their findings, the more you condescendingly reiterate that which we were all told as children, and pretend like that's the end-all be-all of the subject, the more you galvanize the Flat Earth community. They actually get stronger when you do this. Their numbers increase, because your side of the discussion looks weaker when you do this. Here's my suggestion. Attack Flat Earth's weakness. Mark Sargent, one of the more prominent people in the Flat Earth movement, has stated a number of times that Antarctica's 24-hour sun is the weakest part of the Flat Earth idea. Use strategy. Attack weakness. Tell us more about the 24-hour sun in Antarctica. Show us that footage claiming to be from Antarctica is coming from where they say it is, because a 24-hour sun in Antarctica is incompatible with the most currently accepted Flat Earth model, the geocentric azimuthal equidistant projection. There are many Flat Earthers who would love to not be Flat Earthers anymore. They long to rejoin the rest of humanity when it comes to the belief of where we live. Please, Neil. Please. Set them free.